So functions in GameMaker are pretty nice. Uh, by now, you've probably heard of them. We're one month into the 2.3 update. They're kind of hard to miss. You can do a lot of things with them. So let me create a, uh, a script. Where are scripts? There are scripts. And let me, uh, let me just define a function. I'm going to have an empty code window and populate it with things myself. I'm just going to create a very simple function called, let's call it, let's call it print. And this is just going to simply show debug message and call it a day. It's a very simple logging function. And you can call this, uh, you can call it like this, show debug message. You can say print 10 and that will cause 10 to appear in the, uh, in the console output down here at the bottom. Uh, there are, there are other ways you can use these, uh, functions. You can say, instead of saying function print, you can say print equals function. And you can do the same thing. Normally that would, yeah, let's, let's stop running the game. Um, there we go. Syntax highlighting took a minute to catch up. Um, if you do it this way, it will, the function will not be highlighted in whatever the color your functions are. And you can see it does the same thing, printing out the value 10 in the bottom down here. The difference between the two is that the first thing I did, function print, uh, this creates a function with a name, which you can access anywhere in the code. And to, uh, to do it the other way, to say print equals function is taking a function and storing it in a variable. Uh, print here is a variable containing a reference to the function. And when you call it, instead of calling the function directly, you are calling the, the function that is stored in the variable. If you wanted to, you could overwrite that with another value. Uh, for this example, we'll use the other message function and it will, instead of, instead of sticking it down here in the console output, it'll, it'll create a, uh, pop-up window with the, with the, uh, the information in it instead. So that's the short version of what's going on here. In old game maker, this would have been roughly equivalent to something like script execute. This doesn't exactly work currently. I'm not going to get into the technicalities of what script execute is now looking for, but hey. it's uh, it's not something you generally want to use in modern game maker. It's mostly there for compatibility with old code now. Anyway, the next logical question to ask is if you can bypass this entirely and do things such as passing functions as arguments to scripts. And the answer is yes, yes you can. And it's quite handy in a lot of situations. And that's what this video is going to be about today. All right, after that lengthy introduction, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. And let's talk about anonymous functions. So you all probably know for loops. They look something like this. And then inside this for loop, you can do something on each iteration of the loop. In this case, uh, you have a loop counter. It goes from one to nine, and you would be allowed to do a certain thing nine times or 10 times really, because zero inclusive. You all know about that. And of course, this doesn't necessarily have to be a, uh, an exact value. It can be based on the something, for example, the length of an array. So you have an array full of words and you can loop over the array with the handy array length function. And you could do something such as, um, let's show debug message instead. To make the uh, to make each word appear in the console, so this is going to run. Uh, you can see down in the console. If I make it a little bigger, I should. Uh, it might not be a bad idea, although I've been zooming in on on it in in video editing. But to make the uh, the font size in the console a little bit bigger so that it's easier to see. Anyway, that's printing out every single word in the array. Now some languages and GML is not one of them uh, would let you do something very similar in your code uh, called a for each loop. Uh, and it would look something like, depending on the language, you would be able to say something like for each element in array, and you would be able to do something very similar. Uh, 
Uh, this will not work in GML. This will cause an error. Uh, this will not even compile. There is a there is a compile error because this is not valid code. And that's kind of a shame. For each loops are kind of nice. They're a slightly more concise way of doing a for loop. Uh, if you're trying to do something as specific as iterating over a uh, an array or a list or some other iter iterable, iterable data structure. I thought I was going to be able to say that word properly. Anyway, uh, the point of this video, as some of you may have guessed, is that you can uh, use functions to do something very similar to this. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to write a function called for each, and it's going to take two arguments. Actually, because these these are technically not the same variable, but because I have a a variable already called array. All right, you know what? When I'm writing code on my own, I'm allowed to be as um, ambiguous with my variable names as, as I want. When I'm writing code for tutorials, I really should not be. Uh, this function is going to take an array, and it's also going to take another function. I'll get back to that in a minute. You don't need a semicolon after the end of after the end of the curly braces, although I'm kind of getting in the habit of doing that for no no particular reason other than that it. My, my finger kind of automatically goes to the semicolon button on the keyboard. Anyway, inside this for each function, we are going to create a for loop. And it's going to look like a regular, uh, a regular for loop. Let me make this bigger since this is the only window of code I'm actually going to be working with today. Uh, we are going to be looping over every element in the array. And then what we are going to do is we're going to call the function that was passed in as a parameter on each element in the array. And that's going to look like this. If you've never seen this before and this looks terrible, uh, remember at the beginning of the video I said you are allowed to store functions inside variables and then execute the function that is stored inside the variable. And that's exactly what's going on here. Uh, in this case, f is a special variable, which happens to be a parameter to the for each function. But at the end of the day, it is still a variable, and you can still, and as long as you pass a function into the uh, the parameter, when you call for each anywhere in your code, uh, it will contain a function which you can execute, and it'll do its thing. So let's make an example of that. Let's uh, let's take this word list word array, and let's let's do a for each. Let's run a let's iterate over it using the for each function. So we can call the function for each, we're going to pass it the word array, words array, and for the uh, the function parameter, we are going to simply say function, and it needs to take one argument because over here on line 13, is it is being called with one argument, which happens to be the element in the array that we're iterating over. So I'm going to just call it the same thing that I called it at the beginning of the video, data, since it can really be any kind of data, and uh, we will simply show debug message the data. This looks rather odd. Uh, this is this is how I'm formatting my code. Uh, if it makes it a little bit more clear what's going on, if it helps you to see a function that looks more like this, uh, you're allowed to do whatever you want with new lines or even white space in GML. This line is a little bit busy looking, but you can see uh, ultimately it is simply a function which is being called with two arguments. Uh, one of which happens to be the word list, and the other one happens to be a function, which takes a parameter and just spits it out in the debug console. Let's just run the game and see what happens. Or run the program anyway, because this isn't really a game. So we can scroll up in the console to where this code ran, and you can see indeed it printed out the quick brown fox jumped over me. So what I was doing before when I initially wrote this, uh, if it helps you to have your code a little bit more organized like this, uh, this is, if anybody has an adverse reaction to JavaScript, I'm sorry, because I probably just like set off your allergies right now by, by writing this code like this. Anyway, some of you, me included, may find it helpful to format your code like this instead so that the function in, as a, that is passed as a parameter somewhat looks like a function that you'd write in GML normally. Like I said, white space and new lines don't really matter in GML. I'm not here to argue with you about code style. That's what the technical channel in the Game Maker Discord is for. Anyway, this is pretty flexible. And since the only thing this function cares about is that the second argument to it contains a function itself, uh, you're also allowed to do something such as
you can assign the function to a separate variable somewhere else. And instead of passing the function directly into the, into the for each, uh, you can pass the variable that contains the function into the for each. And it will work just as well as before. You can see down in the console, the quick brown, brown fox jumped over me. Uh, if you want, you can take it a step further. Instead of making element function a function which is stored in a variable, you can uh, you can do it the other way. You can define it, you can define it globally like this, and you can pass the the function name into the for each as before. And this will do the same thing as it did the first time, the first two times really. You can see once again, and that's about all there is to it. So this is called an anonymous function when you um, if I were to control Z a bunch of times. If you were to take a function and just sort of throw it around in the form of a parameter without assigning it a name or anything like that, that is generally referred to as an anonymous function in programming. You do see them often in JavaScript. They do exist in other languages. And um, if you ever happen to be in need of something specific like a for each loop in GML, this is, uh, this is probably how you would do it. A small word of warning though, this is a slightly less efficient way of just iterating over an array or a DS list or something using a regular for loop. There is a small amount of processing overhead, which is uh, incurred every time you call a GML function. And it's, it's to be clear, it's very small. It's probably less than a microsecond each time you call a GML function. But if you do it too often, it will add up. For example, if you have a list of 500 items and you, uh, you full reach over them, that's an entire half of a millisecond out of the 16 that you're allowed if you want to keep your game at 60 frames per second, which is doing nothing but uh, entering another function, which is perhaps not something you want to do when you could also just write a slightly longer and less concise for loop, which will not have that uh, overhead involved. I can teach you, but I- Anyway, that's it. It's quite simple. This is anonymous functions and for each loops in GML. You can use them. You can not use them. You can use anonymous functions for other things. Anytime you want to have a generic function, which can call different kinds of behavior from different points on the code, they're pretty good to have. For anyone who's looked through the code of my emu UI library that I posted over the summer, it uses them quite a lot uh, for things like creating buttons. And you can pass them anonymous functions to determine their behavior, what happens when you click on them and that sort of thing. I think that's it though. So uh, the code for this is going to be in the video description as usual. Let's just commit those changes which is pretty much the, in, the entire 19 lines of code here. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, there's links to that in all the usual places. Otherwise, uh, I hope you found that useful. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. I try to post a couple of videos of this nature a week. Some long, some short, some 3D, some let's make a tower defense game from start to finish on video, because that sounds like a fun way to spend my time. And I will see you all later. Special thanks to Edward Holt, Indie Punch, Posho Dev, and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want your name in the credits and to force me to say them out loud at the end, head over to the Patreon page in the video description and join the fun.